she got a new couple here. It's kind of hard not to find new couples when they come in here, right? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It is good. I, uh, we got uh, all the kids outside tonight, all the boys anyway, and uh, they uh, might be uh, coming in and out a little bit. Uh, we're a little shorthanded tonight, but we got some help, so I appreciate that very much. And uh, some folks on vacation and some things have come up, too. It kind of happens at the same time, but it, we'll work it all out. I tell you, we had a bus full picking up today, so kids are ready. And uh, pray, I think some are fine. They came to Ohio today, a little warm, but uh, trying to cool it down on the inside here. Y'all comfortable? Y'all okay? All right. Praise God. Some say yes, some say no. It's kind of funny. In the same sanctuary, I have people putting their jackets on and people fanning at the same time. Now, I'll tell you what's rough is we see somebody put their jacket on and they're fanning at the same time. Those are the people we pray for. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Now, we've got uh, Abby's out of town right now, of course, and, uh, but they'll be back for this Sunday. So tonight, I, I will be uh, singing toward uh, with the CD, but uh, we can uh, stand together, praise God, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll pray and ask the Lord to help us in the service. Come on in, sister, just in time, all right? Let's pray together, asking for God's blessing, okay? Heavenly Father, as we come before the very throne of God tonight, we thank you, Lord, for this time and opportunity we have to gather together as a body of Christ, to praise you, to worship you, to lift up the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I invite the Holy Spirit in this place. We desire you. We want to follow, be led by the Lord. And I pray that you bless this time, this service, this teaching, this time of worship. I pray that you'll bless all of these children. Thank God, Lord, that we're able to bring these children here, that we're able to minister to them, the love of Jesus, able to help them to know what the will of God is for their lives. And I pray for the teacher you anoint them. Thank them for the time, the effort, the energy they put into this to deposit something of God into these children. So I'm asking your blessing upon them as well. I pray, Lord God, all those that may be watching, viewing us, Lord, uh, online, I pray that you bless them as well. And uh, just thank you for just this opportunity and everybody that's here tonight. We give you all the glory and the praise as we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. All right. Turn and say hi to one another, okay? God bless you. Welcome. We welcome our visitors tonight. So glad to have you. Praise the Lord. We'll try our best not to scare you off right away. Hey, man. But we do get a little excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, Misty. Hey, Nakia. Good to have you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Good to have you. All right. We're going to start off with uh, uh, victory in Jesus, okay? Sound good? Praise the Lord. Brother, like I said, amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. A little louder, Brother John, please. Praise God. We'll sing with verse 1. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning I repented of my sins and won the victory. All together, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love. me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Thank God we've got the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing with all your heart tonight. Verse 2 and 3. Praise the Lord. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then i cry dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory verse three i heard about a mansion he has built for me i mean know that to be the truth amen praise god Oh, yes, the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angel.
angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory and jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ever all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood amen how many have the victory tonight hallelujah because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of the cross of Christ, not based on how you feel. Amen. Sometimes you're feeling good. Sometimes you're feeling low. Sometimes you're feeling in between. But it's not based by feelings. It's by faith in the Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. I have been saved for like 31 years now. It seems like yesterday. But I tell you, it goes, time goes fast. But you know, in heaven, it's eternity. There is no time. It's eternity. It's hard for us to comprehend that, to fathom that, but that's the way it is. We'll always be with the Lord, praise God, amen. And so when we sing these songs, they mean something to us because we understand that it's through Jesus Christ that we have our victory. I want to talk, sing about the blood now, okay, amen. The blood that will never lose its power. Praise the Lord. And help me sing this tonight, okay, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Thank God he shed it for me. Amen. Oh, way back, way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength. Oh, yes. From day to day. It will never lose its power. The chorus together, church, amen. Because it reaches to the highest mountain. Thank God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. It flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, the blood that gives me strength. Oh, yes, from day to day, it will never lose its power. Amen. It's lose all my doubts and calms my how many believe that tonight? Amen. Yes. And it dries all my tears. It's the blood that gives me strength. Oh, yes. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Sing with all your heart, church. Hallelujah. Oh, it reaches to the highest. Yes, it does. It'll reach every lost soul, praise God. It flows to the lowest valley. Hallelujah, Lord. The blood that gives me strength from death. To the highest. Yes, it does. You got to thank the Lord for the blood tonight. Praise God. It flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes, Lord, the blood that gives me strength. Yeah. 
Thank God it'll never lose. Amen. glory tonight. It will never lose. Thank God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise tonight. How many believe that? It will never lose its power. Amen. Praise God. It will never, ever, 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 ever lose its power. Praise God. Things wear out. Things rust out. But let me tell you, the blood of Jesus will never lose its power. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. How do y'all feel tonight? Feeling good? Let's sing one more, okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You already know, don't you? One of my favorites too, sister. It really is. What a day that will be. Praise God. Amen. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Amen. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Amen. There'll be no sorrow there. No more burdens, no more burdens to bear. To Praise bear. God. No more sickness, no pain. No more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day. Oh yes, sing with all your heart tonight. The chorus, praise God. Hallelujah. What a day. What a day. That will be. When my Jesus. Oh, when you open your eyes and you see the Lord. I look upon his face. Praise God. The one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand. And leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day. Sing it again, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand, the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be, oh thank you Lord, what a day, glorious day that will be, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Would you pray with me tonight? Amen. Father God, we love and praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your wonderful mercy, your grace, your tender uh, mercies toward us, and how much you love us, God. I thank you that you made a way of salvation. I thank you for the living hope that we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray your blessing, Father, on every person. Give us open minds, open hearts to receive of thy truths, that we not resist you or resist the Holy Spirit or resist the Word of God. I pray tonight. Thank you, Father. We love you. We praise you. God, we want to pray. 
pray for our loved ones. We want to pray for the lost. We want to pray for the backslider. We want to pray for the one that's running away from God. That God, that you get a hold of them, that you would draw their hearts back to you, Father. Some of them that know the truth, God, like the prodigal. Lord, they've gone the other way, gone the other direction. Like Demas, having loved this present life, this present world, they've left God, left the things of God, left the love of God, left the truth of God. But I pray for them, Lord. I pray that you'll open their eyes, open their heart to receive you, Lord, into their hearts and open their eyes, I pray, to see the truth, God. We love and praise you, Lord. We know, uh, Lord, the truth that will set you free. We give you all the glory as we ask this tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I hope and pray that you've had a, a good week thus far. Here we are at Wednesday already. Had a wonderful prayer meeting last night. Great turnout, great spirit, wonderful presence of the Lord. And we get caught up in the Lord and we, we lose track of time. You know what I'm talking about? You just lose track of time. And, uh, but that's kind of like what it's going to be in heaven. You're not going to be looking at your watch. You're not going to be looking at the clock. You're not going to be saying, man, that preacher's going on a long time. You're not going to be doing that in heaven because there is no time. Amen. And uh, thank God, praise the Lord. I know we're all geared towards time right now. We're all kind of equated to that. We get that. But uh, in heaven, it won't be like that. Praise the Lord. Because God is eternal. We'll be in the presence of, of Jesus. We're really glad to have you folks with us. Amen. I'm glad you can make it out to our Wednesday night service. I know a lot of people are busy. Got folks on vacation. Things come up. And I sing these songs tonight because I've, I have people that say, you know, we like to sing, uh, we like to sing those, old, those old hymns from time to time. And so I said, you know, I'm going to do that tonight. It's going to be the old hymns tonight. And then the folks that say they want to hear it, they didn't show up. You know, that's how it works, you know. But <laughs> you know how many times that happens, you know. So I said, well, I'm going to bless them tonight. But that's just the way it works. They didn't make it. So, but uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe they'll wait another six months. No, here to get. No, I'm just kidding with you. Amen. Uh, praise God. All right. Praise the Lord. Um, all right. A couple things here. Let's see. Let me just mention to you this Sunday, remember that uh, in the evening service, we'll have our communion service, and then that'll be July 23rd, and then we'll have our fellowship time together. Okay. So we'll have worship, communion, and then we're going to break and have, have food to eat. Okay. So uh, y'all got some great cooks in this church. So bring. Uh, all our favorite uh, vittles, food, have a great time together Sunday night, and uh, looking forward to that. So don't forget about that, okay? And then also, um, I did change the date on the PB&J, just to let you know, it's August the 19th. Should be August the 19th up there. Yes, I got it right. August the 19th instead of the, the 12th, of which we had, because of... Uh, uh, some schedules getting mixed up there, okay? And then also, if you're interested in water baptism, I've got two candidates so far. We're going to have water baptism on August the 6th. That'll be Sunday morning after the morning service right back here uh, where the garage is, front of the garage. So August the 6th. If you're interested, please let me know. And uh, Sister Laura Lee has been teaching on water baptism, if I'm not mistaken. So very, very important. I tell you, if you're, if you're going to uh, be baptized in water, I would, I would suggest getting information from Sister Laura Lee about why we get baptized by water. We understand it does not save us. We are baptized because we're saved. It's an outward expression of an inward change. Uh, we're dead to the old self. We're dead to the old life. We're dead to Satan. We're dead to sin. We're dead to the world. And we rise up through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, through the cross, amen, in newness of life. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And we're new in Christ. We're a new creation. We're a new children. We're a new creature in Christ. And so praise God uh, for that, all right? Praise the Lord. And, uh, and uh, listen, if you can share this on Facebook, our services, we appreciate that very much. Gets the word out. Of course, we got missions, missionettes and rangers tonight. Now those kids are glad. I tell you, they were anxious to get back tonight. And uh, help us uh, to reach the lost. Help us to reach people with the gospel, okay? And again, uh, Wednesday night like we have tonight, this is called W-O-L-B-I, Word of Life Bible Institute. So it's a little bit different uh, for you that may be new here, first time on a Wednesday night, that... Um, that, you know, it's a teaching, preaching, but a little bit more like Bible classes, Bible school. Not quite to the level of Bible college, but not far from it. There's just things that don't make you do that they would make us do in Bible college. But we do have the papers, the information up here. Can get some of this off our website. If you're interested to take notes, uh, you can get your own notebook and take notes. I've got papers I give to you. You can fill in the blank and so forth. That, uh, that can help as well, okay? Again, this is just for your learning, growth, and development. Nobody is forced. When we're finished with certain sections, if you've been faithful to the class, Wednesday nights, and uh, you can continue to be faithful. Some drop out, and some have dropped out. 
um, you get a certificate uh, at the end of this. And so at, after each phase, each uh, section, I guess, uh, you do get a certificate. We've already passed these out to some before. And I tell you, I pray by the grace of God that before Jesus comes, we can get through it, the entire Bible. But we're just in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, okay? we got a long ways to go. But I tell you, if we, I don't know. I, I'm thinking Jesus can come at any moment. But so I tell you what, if I don't finish this, we'll let Jesus finish it when we're in heaven. He'll tell you everything you need to know. And how many know, realize this, when we get to heaven, we'll still be learning. We'll still be learning. You still won't know everything. We actually will continue to grow in learning in, in, in God and learning about the Lord. Because remember, he's God. We're not. Even in heaven, he's God. We're not. Okay? So we're still learning. We're growing and developing in the Lord. Okay, if you have an offering tonight or tithe, whatever, the baskets are right there. Uh, please just leave it there. Of course, the building fund box is right over there. And we continue to pray, believe in God for this as, as well. Okay? Uh, Brother Joe Farley did well with his surgery on Monday. He is home. And Sister Sue uh, is home now as well, and she's doing okay. Okay, so just uh, continue to uh, believe uh, the Lord for them also, okay. And I got a text from Sister Ida, but I didn't get a chance to read it yet. But I'll give you an update of what's going on there just as soon as the service is over and I can get an update on that there, okay. Sound good? Praise God. All right, everybody good? Everybody comfortable tonight? All right, praise the Lord. Shall we get into the word of the Lord here this evening? Someone said, yes, I heard it. Amen. Praise God. We'll do that. Got some questions for you tonight. Let me turn on this other mic. And uh, so hopefully we can remember uh, that we talked about last uh, week. Am I on? Are we live? There we go. That sounds good. All right, folks. Praise the Lord. Don't you love the Lord and love his word? I used to be forced to go to church until I got saved, and then I want to go to church, you know, a big difference, and uh, you know, I just, I just had no desire for it, I, I was forced to go, my grandma would give me a quarter if I stayed away, and uh, that type of thing, <laughs> but I tell you what, when I got the Holy Ghost, I didn't need a quarter anymore, when you got the fire, hey amen, when you got the fire of God, you don't have to have a quarter to stay awake, you're hungry for God, you desire it, okay, all right, let's go over some questions here tonight, um, Lord, I just ask, Lord, your blessing tonight to teach thy word, your anointing. I thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's look at this. Oh, just things we talked about last uh, Wednesday night. What happened when Elisha prayed for his servant? You know what happened? Do you remember? Open opened his eyes. That's right. So, so God opened the eyes of his servant. Elisha prayed that God would open his eyes because he couldn't see what Elisha saw. Elisha saw into the spirit realm, and his servant could not. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say his servant wasn't saved. I'm not going to say his servant didn't believe God. He's walking with Elisha, the prophet of God, the man of God. So I'm assuming this man is a believer of God, right, the God of Israel. But how many know some see and some don't? It all depends on their faith. It all depends on whether people want to see or not. And, and so uh, if you'll open your heart to the Lord and you're hungry and you desire God, God will open up the heavens. God will reveal things to you. God will reveal truths to you. And you will have insight in the spirit, insight in the spiritual realm, insight in the word of God. And, and what we're going to learn is going to be in the Word of God. It's not going to be something outside of the Word of God, but God gives us the revelation. How many know somebody can read the same verse? Somebody gets something out of it, somebody else doesn't. You can read the same verse. Somebody gets, you know, this out of it. Somebody gets that out of it. Somebody else gets this out of it. Somebody gets that out of it. And that happens. There have been verses I've read and I've known, I've memorized. I know them very well. I think I know everything there is to know in that verse. And then someone comes along and says something else about that verse. I thought, huh, I never thought of that before. I never saw that before. And so that happens. That, what is this? That's revelation. That's the spirit of illumination. That comes from the Holy Ghost. That's insight, okay? What did the servant see? What did the servant see? He's, he saw what? He's, no, no, the servant, not Elisha. At first he saw nothing. No, we're talking about. No, he saw. What he, the, they, that, yeah, that's right. He saw the mountain full of horses and chariots of fire. You're thinking, you're thinking Elijah. I know exactly what you're thinking of Elijah, but we're talking about Elisha, okay? And he saw, the, he saw what he saw at this point is that he saw the horses, mountain full of horses and chariots of fire just like Elisha saw. Does God protect his children? Yes, yes he does. Okay, put your faith and trust in the Lord. Does, uh, does the angel of the Lord encamp around those who fear God? Yes, he does. What did the enemy do when Nehemiah built the wall? Talk about Nehemiah. We've mentioned him. What did, Nehemiah, what did the enemy do? Came against them, conspired. Remember that? Threatened them. Remember that? Threatened, just like the enemy does today. Lied. Does the enemy lie? 
Yeah, can the enemy tell the truth? No. The, devil, the, the Bible says that, that the devil is a liar, the father of lies, right? So the enemy collaborated and caused fear and confusion just like the enemy does today. Fear and confusion, that's the enemy. That is not God. That's not the Holy Spirit doing that. Is God our defender and our protector? Yes, yes he is. When the Syrians came to Elisha, what now? Okay, this is past them seeing him around. Okay, that they, they saw him, of course, horse and chariots around. But now they've come to Elisha. When they came to Elisha, what happened? What did Elisha do? Struck him with blindness. He prayed. He prayed. That's right. And God struck the enemy with blindness. Were they partially blind or just blind? They were blind. Okay, the Bible says blind. I know some say partially blind, but uh, it's not like they had cataracts over their eyes. It appears that they were blind. Blind, okay. Um, where did Elisha lead the Syrian raiders back to? To where? It starts with an S. Samaria. Remember, led them to Samaria. Okay, so they didn't know they were going to Samaria. Okay, but they went to Samaria. Did Elisha do this with a big army or did he do it single-handedly? Single-handedly, okay. He had, he had God, didn't he? He had the Lord. He's led of the Spirit of God. Okay, um, when Elisha led the Syrian army back, what did the king of Israel do? What did he ask if he could do? Yeah, he said, can I kill him? Can I kill him? Can I kill him? Right? He wanted a victory under his belt. And Elisha said, no. no. Okay, very good. Um, so what did Elisha tell the king to do instead of kill him? <laughs> to feed him food and water, right? Have a celebration. Now, this is odd. We'll talk a little bit more about that tonight, okay? Um, showing kindness to our enemies may cause them to experience shame and possibly come to God for salvation. Yes, true, okay. Showing kindness to our enemies, okay, might possibly bring them to a point of salvation, okay, um, where they experience shame for the way that they acted, and they might possibly come to God for salvation. Elisha showed mercy instead of judgment, true or false? True. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy, or they shall obtain mercy. Very good. Okay, if you want, you can be in your Bibles in chapter 6 of 2 Kings tonight. Uh, again, we're going to be kind of in verse 18, uh, 19, and 20, 21 through uh, 23 tonight for a little bit. But Elisha knew that if they destroyed the band of the raiders, of course, that uh, from uh, that Benadad, uh, Benadad, the king of the Syria, uh, would just send another army to fight against Israel. And it would just continue to be a vicious cycle of war and of killings. Therefore, instead of showing judgment... Uh, Elisha showed mercy, okay? This is something totally unexpected. He told, the king, he told King Joram of Israel in uh, verse 22 of 2 Kings chapter 6, set food and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And so the king probably was scratching his head right at this point, wondering what in the world Elisha was up to. Never had they done anything like this. And it was King Joram's blood. It was in his blood to kill and destroy. And that's what religion wants to do. Religion wants to, to kill and destroy, okay? When I talk about religion, I'm talking about uh, religion without outside of a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, okay? Just going through religious routines doesn't mean that that person is saved. Just going to church doesn't make you saved. Just giving tithe doesn't make you saved. Just taking the Lord's Supper or communion doesn't make you saved. You've got to be born again like Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. So it was Elisha's blood uh, to show mercy and kindness because he is a type of grace. And I'm sure that the enemy was shocked. I mean, wouldn't you be shocked if something like this would happen? They knew for sure that they were dead men, but instead of killing them uh, with swords and with spears and stuff, Elisha and the king of Israel killed their enemy with kindness. What a tremendous lesson, really for us to learn instead of retaliating with hate anger bitterness or a flared tempers you show kindness kindness is the fruit of the spirit bible tells us in the book of galatians the lost world retaliates but we're not of the world we're called out of the world we're called in the light of god's son kindness is the fruit of the spirit like i said solomon said this we read the scripture last wednesday if your enemy is hungry give him bread to eat if he's thirsty give him water to drink for in so you will heap coals of fire on his head and the lord will reward you so this is kind of what even jesus taught as well. Remember when Jesus taught, he said, when he talked about, uh, do these unto the least of these of mine, my brethren. Then he said, when you give them food, you give them water. When you visit them in prison, when you visit the sick, and so forth. And so really, this is the same type of teaching in the Old Testament, in the, in the Proverbs, as we see also in the book of 2 Kings, as we see also in the New Testament. So Paul referred to this also in Romans 12 and 20, and he said, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And then Paul said, do not overcome 
by evil. He said, but overcome evil with good. And so instead of retaliating the same way that they treat you, and, and, and in other words, turn the other cheek as Jesus taught. Don't retaliate in the same way. Many times, if somebody bows up to us, we bow up to them. If somebody says something bad to us, we say something bad to them. If somebody yells at us, we yell at them. If somebody throws something at us, we throw something back at them. But whatever it might be, and we want to hurt them worse than they hurt us. But God is teaching us a different way. The Bible teaches another way. Don't act like the world. Don't retaliate like the world. Let's act like Jesus would do, okay? And so we cannot do that unless we have the power of the Holy Spirit helping us, okay? Because we can't do it in our own flesh, in our own might, in our own strength. Paul is saying that this is the noble and correct response that God's grace makes possible of believers to their enemies. Doing good to our enemies may cause them to experience shame. That's right. In other words, uh, a soft answer turns away wrath. If somebody yells at you, don't yell back at them. Let me tell you something. This works. I have done this many, 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 many Many, many, many times, if somebody yells at you, instead of yelling back at them, just talk to them softly, and you'll find they'll calm down. Most of the time, they will calm down and realize, okay, you're not irrational, and you can actually talk and hold a conversation, okay? So doing good to our enemies may cause them to experience shame, but eventually bring them to God and to bring them to salvation. But isn't that what we want to do? Don't we want them to get saved? Don't we want them to know about the Lord? Don't we want them to, to have a life-changing account of the Lord Jesus Christ and their sins forgiven, that they might have eternal life? Well, of course that we do. That's the answer. Yes. Elisha was walking in the Spirit, led by the Spirit of God. We need to keep in mind that as Christians, we represent Christ. We represent the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said that we're ambassadors and that, that uh, we bring a message of reconciliation that men might come to know the Lord, that men might come to know Christ, okay? We must remember that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principality and powers. Therefore, we must look beyond the material shell of a person and realize that that is a soul. That is a soul soul right there in which we want to have the opportunity to win to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said this, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Yes, we've heard that. Love your, he said, he said, yes, we love your, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But he says, I say unto you, but I say unto you. Now, what are we saying? Jesus says this unto you. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Okay. That's kind of hard to do, isn't it? Bless those who curse you. When you have somebody cursing you, that's kind of hard to bless them. All right. It's like somebody's cursing you, swearing at you. And you just say, bless you, my son. Bless you, my son. And bless you, my son. Oh, Lord Jesus. In other words, bless them. Lord, save them. Lord, draw their heart to you. Lord, may they open their heart to you. Amen to the truth. And he says, do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. When he says sons of your Father in heaven, means children of God live by this. This is how we act. This is how we react. This is what's different about us. We don't follow the spirit of the world. We don't follow the spirit of the devil. We don't follow the spirit of the Antichrist. We follow the Lord. We follow the spirit of God. We follow Christ, okay? And, uh, and so I, I, I cannot say that I am not guilty. I, I, I can't say that I've always done this. No, uh, I, I'm sad to say that there are times that I've failed many times from Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 45. If you can get that, if you can live that, praise God, then you've come a long ways, okay? The phrase here that says that you may be sons of your Father in heaven speaks of those who belong to God. will be led to the Spirit. Therefore, our conduct will follow suit to those who are of God. Not just being religious, but those who are of God. Okay? So there is a difference. There is a difference. Jesus, listen, the Bible says that you, uh, talking about the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will know them by their love for one another. I've had many people come through this church and tell me how they really, they, these are loving people. These are caring people. These are great people. I agree. Praise God. Does it mean we're perfect? No. It's a perfect church? Absolutely not, because nobody is perfect, okay? We all fall short. We all stumble. We all make mistakes, and I've always said this before. If you find a perfect church, don't go to it, because you will mess it up, okay? What am I saying? Well, we like to find fault with everybody else, but we never think we have fault in ourselves. You know, I'm going to tell you something. You can find fault with somebody else, but you have fault too. You have fault too. Jesus said, before you try to remove the splinter out of your brother's eye, remove the log that's in your own eye, right? That's right. Come on, church. Help me out here tonight. We're trying to find fault in everybody else. We're putting everybody else down. We're criticizing everybody else. We're trying to remove, we're trying to remove the splinter in their eye. And Jesus is saying, hey, wait a minute. Remove the log out of your eye first. In other words, you, are, you have problems too. You're not perfect either, okay? You're at fault also. And so before we criticize, maybe we should take a good look at ourselves and realize, you know what? We need forgiveness too. We're not perfect. We need God's help also, okay? We're, we're, we, I know I realize this. We are in right standing with God. I understand that by faith. I get that. But there's a progression. Progressive sanctification where God is 
transforming us or, or God is, God is uh, changing us on the inside to make us more like Christ, to be more like Christ, okay, Christ-like. So the older that we are in the Lord, the more, the more patience we should have. The older we are in Christ, the more love we should have, the more grace we should have, the more mercy. I'm not hearing any amens here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we, there, in, in other words, when you come toward the end of your, your journey and, and you've walked with God for 50, 60, 70 years, you ought to be the most Christ-like person there is on the face of the earth. Somebody agree with me tonight? Amen. It's not always easy because the old Adam wants to flare up, show up, give us a hard time. Sometimes, you know, our tongue gets away with us. James said, your tongue is set on fire by hell itself. In other words, most of the church, most of Christians, I hate to say this, or I could say most of religious people, the devil has their tongue. Amen, church, amen. We need our tongue to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. James says, if that happens, that shows a sign of maturity. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't have, care how long you've been walking with the Lord. If I see a controlled tongue, I see maturity in that life, okay? So another thing about churches, we got to be careful, is they can be a gossiping people. Amen. And sometimes I'm like, would you please roll that tongue back up into your mouth? Some people. Huh? All right. So be careful. All right. You know, because so, if you let that thing hang out there, I'm going to come and I'm going to stomp on it. Amen. <laughs> Okay, we're talking about maturity in the Lord Jesus. I'm not saying we all have made mistakes. We all have done this. Let me tell you, we've all gossiped. We've all gossiped. <laughs> Come on, we've all said things about people we shouldn't say. We've all talked about one another. We've talked against our husbands, our wives. Our, we've talked against our children. We, our children have talked against us. We've talked against our moms, our dads, our dads and moms have talked against us. We've all done it. Yeah. We're all guilty. And so we say, God, change us, okay? Change us, all right? Now, the purpose is that we might have the opportunity, again, to win people to Christ, not push them away, okay? By not retaliating against your enemy is the opposite response that they would be expecting. By showing love and kindness would possibly soften their hearts. I believe it would. To where they would be willing to listen or accept Christ into their hearts. See, we're praying for, for an open door, not a closed door. We want an open door, okay? Don't push the door open. Don't shove the door open. Don't kick the door open. But when the door opens, the Bible says God opens the door. When God opens the door, you can walk through it. And then you can talk to that person, okay? Maybe, maybe it's the right message at the wrong time. Maybe that person isn't ready to receive that message. Maybe their hearts are closed. Maybe they're upset. Maybe they're angry. Don't try yet, okay? Wait till you have a green light by God the Holy Spirit to tell you to walk through that door. And when God does it, you don't have to force it. You don't have to kick it down. You don't have to make it. I tell you, you'll know. God puts it all together. It'll flow, and they'll receive it and be acceptance to the message of the cross, of the gospel, of the Lord Jesus Christ, or they'll listen to what you have to say okay believe me believe me when i say this okay believe me wait on the lord now there may come a time when you have to dust your sandals off and move on i've had to do that too okay there may come a time when you can you uh, you should no longer cast your pearl before swine come on church you'll have to do that too okay but our initial reaction should be that of love kindness forgiveness and prayer treat your enemy the way that jesus would not the way they would treat you okay all right What's the golden rule? Do unto others as they would have them do unto you. Do unto others as, as you would have them do unto you. So, so in other words, it's like this. It's like treat others the way you want to be treated. You want to be treated with love, kindness, and respect, okay? Then treat other people with love, kindness, and respect. It's not too difficult to learn this. But that's, that's, that's the Bible. That's what Jesus teaches, okay? It's harder to do it, okay? But the fact is, if, in other words, in other words, Sometimes, you know, like, you get really, really upset because somebody smarted off to you. Well, you might have smarted off to somebody, too. In other words, we say you get upset if somebody does something to you, but yet you might be doing the same thing, okay? Uh, you reap what you sow. What goes around comes around, okay? I think I mentioned this last Sun Wednesday. I call it the boomerang effect. The Bible is full of boomerang effects. Uh, you take a boomerang and you throw it, and it... Eventually, it comes back to you. I used to have one. I was uh, eight and nine years old. I traveled the United States with my grandparents, my, my grandpa, my grandma, my grandpa, and my mom. For three months, we sold uh, our place, and uh, we traveled for three months. All we lived was in a trailer and a camper. It was fantastic. One of the best times of my life for three months. And my grandpa bought me a boomerang. This thing really worked. And I would throw that boomerang, and it would go around, man, and it would come back to you. It really would come back to you. Unless it got caught in a tree. 
one of the times we were camping, and uh, I can't remember if it was in Kentucky or Tennessee. I'm not going to find that tree yet. Anyway, and I threw that boomerang, and that thing took off and sailed off and got caught in one of those trees up there. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, never did get that boomerang back. But the fact is the Bible does have the boomerang effect. You reap what you sow, okay? So remember that. What you do unto others, you also want them to do unto you. But remember, it can be the opposite effect as well. Okay, are we all doing good so far? Yes. Here we go. Okay, so don't take vengeance out on them, but leave that up to God to deal with their hearts. Put it in God's hand. God is the judge. Now, Paul said this in Romans 12, 19 and 20. It's on the monitor there. 12, 19 and 20. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. In other words, don't, you, you don't go do it. You don't, you don't take vengeance out. You don't go get even. That's what it means. Don't go get even, okay? But rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord it says, so rather than Elisha showing judgment and killing the Syrian army, the band of raiders, Elisha showed mercy. This was totally something that they were not expecting. The king obeyed Elisha's command and prepared a great feast for their enemy. They ate, they drank, and then Elisha sent them away to go back to their master, Benadad, the king of Syria. And so the Bible says this in verse 23 of 2 Kings 6. So the bands of Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. You know why? They were shell-shocked. They got to be shell-shocked. I bet they went back dazed. They had to go back thinking, scratching their head, thinking, did, did this really, can you imagine the conversation among each other? Joe, did this really happen? Bob, did you see what happened? Mike, did you, I don't know. I never, John, did you, I don't know. I, I don't know, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Never, ever in my life, okay? Um, so, can you imagine what they must have said when they went back to their families? I mean, they probably said, you know, and again, I'm just going to add this. It's not the Bible, but if I'm just thinking out loud like we are today, like human, humanity is. I can imagine they would say, sit down. You're not going to believe what just happened to me today. I mean, I shouldn't be here right now, but I'm alive because they showed kindness and mercy to us. I mean, they made a big feast for us. We ate, we drank, and then they let us go. Get out of here. No, I tell you the truth. <laughs> really? You're lying again to us, Dad. You always tell us stories that aren't true. No, I'm telling you the truth. It was incredible. I've never witnessed anything like it. And I can imagine maybe they might have even perhaps said, you know, if that's the kind of God they serve, I'm interested to know more about the God of Israel. There you go. That's it. If that's, if that's how they act toward us, I am interested to know about their God because I don't see our people acting like that. Okay? We're a bunch of bloodthirsty uh, people that are, are wanting to kill, okay, and steal and rob. So what we see in the Old Testament was what the Holy Spirit is showing us uh, really in, is the gospel in action. It's a great lesson for us to learn and to, be, and to apply. And by doing so, may we have the opportunity to win more people to Christ. Okay, the Bible says, he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. James 5, 19 and 20 right there. So praise God. Miracles do happen. And that concludes that portion, that section of chapter 6, and so now we will move on. Anybody have any questions about this tonight? Anybody? Everybody good? Okay. So, you know, when I, when I read this stuff, when I study this stuff, when I put this together, I'm like, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, because I feel like I fall so short, okay? I've, I've got, uh, I had OnStar on uh, my credit card, and, uh, you know, uh, OnStar for my car, and I, I've had it for several years, and they would bill me, I think it was $20 a month, $20 a month, something like that, and, uh, and so, you know, I really liked it because there are times I've locked my keys in my car. Well, I got on my phone, I can unlock my car. I can start my car on my phone. I can lock it, unlock it, set the alarm. I can do all kinds of things. I really liked it. Well, they, they gave me a notice and said in December that in January of 2023, the 2G network will no longer be available, so I will not have OnStar. So they tried to give me this rinky-dink offer, whatever it was, for $15 a month. Well, I called them up and said, no, thank you, in January. I said, no. Um, listen, the features I really wanted were the fact that I could start my car and all this kind of stuff. I said, I can't do that anymore. And I said, by the way, I said, I paid for all that when I bought my car, and now you're all taking all the features away. I don't like that. Maybe you can pass that on to whoever is in charge of all this. And they understood and I said, okay. And so they said, okay, cancel my account and all that kind of thing. Well, February came along. They charged me $15. So I had to call him and said, hey, you're not supposed to charge me. You're supposed to cancel my account. I said, okay. So uh, February, March came along. They charged me $15, $15 in March. So I called him up and said, listen, guys, you're not supposed to. I canceled this. Oh, wait. sorry, Mr. Mull. Then all this. Okay. I said, get it off of there. I don't want to deal with this anymore, okay? I've done this over and over and over. We're done, okay? April came along. They charged me $15 twice. 
And I said, okay, look, I don't know what's going on with you guys. I don't know what's happening over there. I says, but, I said, I've called. You've got the record there. You can see on the account how I've called many times, canceled every month, every month, every month. And now you guys charge me twice. Sorry, Mr. Muller, we'll get this off right away. So I don't know what happened. I said, I don't know what happened either. I said, get it off. I don't want to see it again. May came around, charged me $15. All right, just the other day, I had to pay for June. What are we in July? I had to pay for June. In June, I got the bill on my credit card. They paid, they paid $15, and then they charged me $30. They charged me $45. I was in a bad mood that day already. I was already in a bad mood that day. And I thought, I've already given you all your chance to get saved. <laughs> I was mad. And the poor man answered the phone. I said, listen. I said, okay. I said, first of all, just tell you right away. I said, I'm mad already before I called you. Secondly, I said, but don't take this personally. This is not toward you. This is going to be toward your company. And I laid into that. I didn't yell, but I was very authoritative, firm, and, and he can tell, okay? And, and I, I just said, I laid into this, and I said, I'm done. I said, I am now, I now consider this as robbery and stealing. I am going to call the local authorities, the police department, which my son works for, and I'm going to report this matter and I'm going to call the credit card company and report you people as fraud. I'm done. I've been nice for months. I, I didn't want to lose my sanctification, sister, but I came close. Because I kept trying to remind myself that I am a minister of the gospel. I am a Christian. But how do you handle things like this? Because I think they're doing us on purpose now. And so, and so I, I tell you the truth, and I haven't, I haven't done it yet. I haven't called the, the, the credit card company only because I've been busy. But I'm going to call the credit card company. I, I, I'm going to file uh, a complaint on this company, OnStar. OnStar, of all people. And so what happens is these people, this is what they do. And y'all be careful about this. Off the record, this is what they do. They're hoping you don't check your credit card bill. And so you cancel something, they just put it back on there. This is what they, they do this on purpose. That ought to be illegal. There ought to be some source or somebody we could go to. There ought to be some kind of ticketing or arrest made for something like this or penalty made for something like this. Be careful. It used to not be like this, but now it is in these days. Watch your credit card bill. Watch your statement. Look at it. Make sure that those are the proper statements or bills that you or, or, or whatever you paid for. Make sure that that's, that's legit, okay? And uh, the fraud is getting worse and worse and worse because corruption, because of lies, because of sin, because of humanity, because of the time that we're living in. I cannot wait for Jesus to come back. I cannot wait for the coming of the Lord, the shout of a, a voice of an archangel and the trump of God. I cannot wait. But anyway, nonetheless. Uh, and so that, that, in other words, do unto others, have them do unto you. And so I, I made it very clearly to the man, I'm not, this is not personal to you. You just work for the company. I said, but you can pass this up to the, whoever needs to hear this. This is recorded. I know that. Let your CEO listen to this. Enough's enough. So, guess what? My on Star called my wife the other day, and uh, and, and so we, we have a, a, a car we're leasing now, and uh, and and so they called her and yesterday and said we would like to, uh, you know, uh, she had thirty days free. We want on Star, and she said let him go through the whole spew. And she says no, thank you. She says oh goodness, can I ask why? She says, gave him the story what happened to her husband. And she says, because of your bad policy and because of what you're doing, I don't want any part of it. So they lost the customer. Okay? They lost the customer. The lady, had, the lady had nothing to back up on. She couldn't say a word. She's like, oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm sorry. Never heard of such. Well, she said, go look up my husband's account. You'll see it. Okay? So we're not making this up. Anyway, all right. Lord, have mercy. We got, uh, got 12 minutes, Okay? Are you ready? Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 24 through 33. We're going to talk about the Syria, Syria besieged, uh, besieged Samaria with uh, severe famine. And so if you, if you want to take the time, you look at verse 24. It's a new paragraph. And you'll see verse 24. The, the, letter 20, the number 24 right there is darkened or emboldened. That means a new paragraph. So you have one chapter, but you have several, several different paragraphs. For instance, verse 19 starts a new paragraph. Verse 24 starts a new paragraph, okay? Verse 30 starts another new paragraph and so forth. So we're going to go on with this here. This next section of 2 Kings chapter 6 is quite interesting. And once again, uh, the knuckleheaded king of Syria, Benadad, here we go, gathered his army and besieged Samaria. Um, after, after, after Elisha was good to them, okay? And after the king of Israel was good to them. Now sometimes, you know, sometime uh, back we, we know that Elisha had shown mercy to Benadad's men, the, the band of raiders. 
uh, wasn't the complete army, but it was a smaller part of the army, a band of raiders. And, but uh, he could have killed his enemy, but instead he showed mercy. And how often we forget the goodness of God. Someone say, amen, pastor. We forget the goodness of God. We forget the mercy of God. We forget what God did for us, how God did it for us many times. God may do something miraculous in our lives, and we're jumping up and down for joy. We're thanking the Lord. We're praising God. We're giving God all the glory. We're testifying to others what God has done in our lives. Hallelujah. We're up on Sunday night, Wednesday night. We're testifying to the goodness of God, praising God. But then after a few months or so go by, we forget. Maybe six months. Maybe a year goes by. Maybe three months. Next thing you know, you know what we're doing? Just what they're doing on the monitor right here. We're griping and we're grumbling and we're complaining. That's what we're doing. And sometimes we start blaming God because he isn't doing anything in our lives. But how many know that is not true? How many know that God is always working, all right? Amen. God is working behind. We may not see it all the time, but God is eternal and God is always on the move. He doesn't take vacations. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get weary. He doesn't take a nap like you and I do. Today I got very tired. I had to go take a 15-minute nap. How many know 15-minute naps are very, very good? Power naps are very, they're helpful. God doesn't have to do that. Okay, but we do. Benadad didn't have a heart for God. Just remember this. He was a heathen king, king of Syria. So it didn't take long for, the, for his pride to get the best of him. And once again, he began to attack God's people in Samaria. You know, he's like, he forgot what they did. So, you know, after some time goes by, maybe a few years go by, he said, you know what? If pride gets up inside of him, he said, well, we're going to go after them again. So 2 Kings 6 and 24. And it happened after this, Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all of his army and went up and besieged Samaria. Samaria is the capital city of Israel. Israel's is made up of the ten northern tribes. Now, a lot of these people, you read this, you're like, I didn't know those in the Bible. I didn't know those in the Bible. That's what I'm teaching you. You're like, man, you're like, make the Bible come to life. That's what we want to do. It's called word of life, Christian center, not word of death, okay? We don't want to be word of born. We want to be word of life. So we're making the Bible. It, it is living. It is quick. It is powerful. But just in how you explain it, how you present this, how you bring it across is very, very important, okay? And so this is what's happening here. So, so the king of king of the king king Benedict says, you know what? They, they they get their army, they get all their army, and they surround the city of Samaria. They, it's like it's like an army surrounding the entire city of Marion, Ohio. And this was a common battle tactic back in those days: surround the city so that they couldn't get any food or supplies. It's the same thing that Nebuchadnezzar did to Judah. Remember this: the three deportations. Remember five eighty six, five ninety five, five ninety seven, and six oh. Uh, 605 BC. Remember those deportations in that time, those three different times? So Nebuchadnezzar had his army surrounding around Jerusalem, okay, so that they couldn't get any supplies. No water in, no water out, no food in, no food out, things like this. Battle tactic back in those days. Benadad was trying to starve them out. Now, let me just say this. This wouldn't surprise me if the devil tries the same type of battle tactic against the children of God, against Christians like you and I. See, what am I saying? Satan wants to weaken God's people. Somebody say amen. He does. That's one of his battle tactics. He makes war with the saints. The book of Revelation tells us that. He wants to starve them out of receiving the word, the true word of God. Listen, he keeps us so distracted, so busy to where we don't have any time to be in the word. We don't have any time to be in prayer. We don't have the time to be in the house of God. Here in the anointed preaching and teaching of the word of God that will penetrate our souls and feed us the spiritual nourishment that's needed. Amen. Praise God. Listen, you cannot grow on cotton candy. Cotton candy is good. We go, woo, woo, cotton candy, woo. It's good, okay? We like it, but you can't grow on it. You grow on things like steak and potatoes. You grow on green beans. You grow on corn on the cob. You grow on, uh, we're not going to talk about spinach. We don't want spinach. But you grow on things that, that are of sustenance, okay? All right? Okay, so um, here we got, here we have here. And uh, uh, so Christians are starving. And, I, and I'm not saying they aren't getting a word, but they're, get, they're not getting the word because there's a word everywhere today on every social platform. There is a word, but it's not the word in all places, okay? Most of it, I'm sorry to say, I've listened to it myself, is garbage. I'm very selective as who I listen to. Amen. It's nothing more than Satan trying to starve out Christians to keep them weak in the faith. You think you're getting something that you're not getting. It sounds good, but is it true? Is it right? Is it according to the word of God? Is it preached and taught in the right context? Is it of the right spirit? Is the person teaching it a holy man or woman of God? Amen. Amen. That's important, you know. 
the word of God that we have, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon holy men of God. It didn't, it didn't say it didn't come on unholy men of God. It'd be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? We got the Bible from unholy men of God. No, we got it from a holy men of God that heard from God. Okay? Why, why would it say holy men of God? Well, because these are going to be the people that are going to listen to God and want to be obedient to the will of God. Holy men of God, holy women of God want to be obedient to the will of God. It's important. Okay? All right. So give me five more. Five more. Give me five more 15 minutes. Give me five more minutes, okay? Okay, so, okay, so, so we're seeing this. Preachers are preaching a self-centered gospel today. We don't even know it. We don't even know it. You know what we're preaching today? We're preaching all this, these messages today to make sure everybody feels good. Make sure you feel good. We don't, no, we're, gonna, we're not going to offend anybody. We're not going to offend anybody. We want to make sure everybody feels good. So we're going to give you a light word that makes you feel good about you. And that's the self-centered gospel. Now, are there times when you can preach a message that might help you to feel good? Yes, absolutely. But I don't know about you, but, uh, it, you know, I feel good every time I know I'm right with God. <laughs> I feel good when I know that that preacher has preached that truth, and that truth penetrates my heart, and I get right with God. I feel good about that, okay? When Brother Clendenin preached, and he's with Jesus now, I kid you not. Here I've been saved all these years, baptized Holy Ghost, pastor myself, and when he's preaching, man, every time he's finished, I feel like I'm lost again. I feel like I'm lost again. I feel like I'm going to get saved again. You know what? And a lot of people can't handle that kind of preaching, but I kind of like that, okay? Because, because that causes me to reevaluate my life, my heart, you know, my, the way I'm living, okay? Reevaluate. Paul said to examine yourselves to make sure that you're in the faith. So, so don't, don't take it for granted that you're saved. Don't take it for granted that you're really in the faith. Your life needs to back it up, okay? Now, the fact is, if you are of God and your heart is right with the Lord, if that, if that truth, however it's preached, if that truth is coming across that pulpit, penetrates your heart and your mind, your soul, your, your, your life, you're going to be thankful for it. If you, that's true. You're going to be thankful for it. Amen. You're not going to get mad at the preacher. We're going to talk about this because they get mad at Elisha. But anyway, the fact is that we want it. We desire the truth. Now, we're living in a day of itching ears. See that guy right there? He's scratching his ears. That's him. That's right. That's, where, that's what we're living today. And they don't want the truth. They don't want, they don't want healthy doctrine, healthy teaching, balanced teaching. Don't let Satan deceive you, and don't let, don't let him starve you out. Make sure that you're in prayer. Make sure you're in the Word of God. Make sure you're in church. Church is not made up of the walls here, but this is where we congregate. This is what we consider the house of God. We are the church people. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, okay? And each member has its purpose. Every joint supplies. But the fact is, columns, roof, floor, walls, windows, that's not the church. It's just where the church gathers. This house is different than all the houses on the street. Everybody knows that. This is a church house. This is the house of the Lord, okay? So make room for God. Make time for God. When I don't eat, I get weak. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If I don't eat, I get weak. And I know some people very close to me, if they don't eat, they get, there's a new term today, it's called hangry. That was an accident, but hey, I like to be led of the Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Just want to be led by the Spirit of God. I know, people say that. So I'll be preaching. I try not to look at people. And even if I'm looking at you, I'm not looking at you. Sometimes I'm looking at you, most of the time I'm not. Most of the time I'm caught up, looking at you, but I'm caught up. And so people say, Pastor, when you said this, you were looking at me. I go, really? What did I say? And they said, well, you said this. I said, I don't even remember saying that. Better go back and listen to the tape and see if I said that. The fact is, I don't remember saying that, but no, I wasn't, I wasn't targeting you. I wasn't meaning to look at you. So I try not to look at people. So I try to like above you a little bit, okay? All right? Now listen, if I am looking at you, that's when you need to be worried. Right, Trevor? <laughs> ah, I knew I could do that. I knew I could do that to Trevor. Amen. Praise God. Now, now if, I don't, if I don't eat, I get weak, and I bottom out sometimes. It's like I bottom out, you know. And, and I feel like I, I'm going to pass out if I don't get enough food, enough nourishment, and I'm not, able to, I'm not able to think or function. You ever get that way? It's like, man, I can't even think. I can't think. You know, one time I remember my early days starting off, you know, and I was going to preach at a prison. And so I was fasting and praying, you know, all day long. I didn't eat all day long. And I preached that night. That was a mistake. Because I got there that night and I bottomed down. I got weak and then I couldn't think. It was the worst, worst message I ever preached in my life. The people are with me trying to help me, you know, say, well, that was good. That was good, Mark. It was, you know, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was awful. So I, I've learned my lesson. I'll fast the day before, but of the day of, I'll never fast when I'm preaching, okay? But anyway, so, so I, I'm not able to think of the function and, and when I don't eat. And that's, and that's what the devil's trying to do to you, to us. May, may we be wise as serpent, harmless as doves. Matthew 10 and 16 tells us that. And we're not to be ignorant of the devil's tactics, okay? So by surrounding the city, 
This would weaken the people. Yeah, that's what it did. And so then Benadad could go in for the kill and take over the city. Simple, right? Without firing a shot. Now, have you ever seen the movie El Cid? Anybody ever heard of the movie El Cid? Charlton Heston. Isn't that Charlton Heston? El Cid. Brother Jim and me. Anybody else? Oh, come on, you all. You're telling my age. El Cid? El Cid. Like a three and a half hour movie. Come on. Yeah, it's got some great parts in it. So what they did in El Cid, El Cid was like a champion in Spain at that time years ago, back like a, what is it, 16th century, 15th century, something like that, 14th century, whatever. So they're like a champion in Spain, you know, like a made, made up figure. I guess there's a real one, but, you know, the guy they have on television, of course, does, a, he's a lot different. But anyway, he's almost got supernatural powers in a sense, but he doesn't. He's almost looking like a god, but he's not, okay? And so what they do, they, the enemy had surround, uh, they, 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 had, they, had, they had, El Cid they had surrounded the city of the enemy to where they were, they were starving to death. I mean, they were like starving to death. I mean, they had nothing. And so what happened was they brought all these caterpillar things. You know, back in the older days, they had them put them big old boulders and things, the caterpillar, and go, boom, they swing on. So after days or months or whatever of starving them out, the people inside the wall of the city, they were like the enemy. They were starving to death, and they were like, they couldn't take it any longer. And so El Cid, they come and surround the city, and what they do is they say, we're not your enemy, we're your friend. He said, your king is your enemy, but we're your friend. And they take bread, big old loaves of bread and they catapulted them into the city on the other side of the wall and so people are fighting over the bread and they realized then guess what the people did they turned against the king and killed the king and then opened the gate and of course they said could come in there and take over the city just like that okay that, that was the movie just to whet your appetite <laughs> it's interesting isn't it and so and so as i come to close here Surrounding the city would, would weaken the people, and then Benadad would go in for the kill and take over. So, um, you know, the famine had been severe. The people were starving to death. Now, I want you to look at verse 25. Now, verse 25, it just says this. And there was a famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it. Until, listen to this. A donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver and one-fourth of a cab. That's not a taxi. A cab is a pint. A cab is a pint of dove, listen to this, of dove droppings, for five shekels of silver. Now, that's the first thing I ever thought of is I'm going to go right to Walmart and I'm going to buy me a pint of Dove droppings. <laughs> Hear that? I can't wait. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure that I get a pint of Dove droppings before we have our Sunday night fellowship. Okay, so now I want you to see this. In today's economy, 80, 80 silver shekels... A shekel would be about the size of a dime. So 80, 80 silver shekels would be worth about $80 today. So one silver dime would be like worth a dollar. And a gold shekel, one gold shekel would be worth about $400 today. So regardless, uh, it was an outrageous price for a donkey's head. Now, not only that, but, but you must be really desperate of starvation to even consider eating a donkey's head. Now, my curiosity is, what do you do with it? Do you, do you boil it? Do you, do, you, do you stick it in the oven and, and put barbecue sauce on it? I don't know what you do with it. But I want you to understand. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It's, it's bad. I know. I realize it. But that's how desperate it got. It got really, really, really bad. Now, the thing about this is that, and I'm going to talk about this. I won't be here next Wednesday, will I? Sister Lori will be here next Wednesday. I won't be here. The, the, I'm going to come back. It's next Wednesday I'm gone, right? Okay. So... So I want you to think about this, though. I want, you, I want you to consider this. I want you to think about this, that the things have gotten so, so bad, so desperate, so, I mean, they were starving to death. And they're to where they would buy doves, droppings, uh, and they could use that for fire, but they could also use it for seasoning. It would be used, like, for salt. I'm going to sprinkle a little dove <laughs> droppings on here, taste this. <laughs> Tell me what you think. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's kind of, you know, that's what it was. <laughs> or here, try this. It's a donkey's head. <laughs> I mean, but really, it had gotten bad. I came home one night and my mother had this unusual smell. And I walked in the room in the kitchen and moved the lid and my mother was putting a hog's head. Yeah, a hog's head. Lord have mercy. Okay. And... And I'll get into this when we get back. But the king was very mad. And, he, and there's a reason for this. He got very mad. He said, you know what? This is it. I'm going to kill Elisha. I'm killing Elisha. 
Okay, this is the problem. We always want to blame somebody else. But I want to tell you something. It didn't have to be like this. If the king of Israel would just have repented and turned to God and cried out to the Lord, life wouldn't have to be like this. Life wouldn't have to be like this if he just turned to God. If he'd have called on the name of the Lord like Jehoshaphat did, things could have been a whole lot better. And sometimes we're, we, our lives, our marriages are a wreck, our homes are a wreck. I'm not happy with my job. I'm not happy with my marriage. I'm not happy with my kids. I'm not happy with my financial condition. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. And we blame everybody else. But the fact is, it doesn't have to be that way if you would turn your life over to Jesus. But because you won't, and because of the pride, and because you resist God, and because of the sin in your life, we're all born into sin, your life is miserable. And God's saying, I, I want to be your Savior, your Lord, your God, your provider, your protector, your defender. And, and you can experience God's saving grace, His love in your life, and He can transform your life and transform your home and transform you and your marriage and your children. He can transform you if you let Him. But the king, of, the king of Israel, the king of Israel didn't have a heart for God. He did not. And so he did everything himself. People suffered. He suffered. And it got so bad that they started practicing cannibalism. We'll talk about that too. That's how bad it got. So I want to ask you this tonight. How bad does it have to get? before you'll turn your life over to Jesus? How bad does it have to get before you'll be obedient to God? Yes, ma'am. turn your life over to Jesus and you've got that transformation, call on Jesus' name. Yeah. You see no difference. Yeah. You That's right. No That's right. God works through you. There's no utopia yeah. here. Yeah. But we've got to learn that. That That's right. is changing us. That's right. Because trouble comes to all of us. That's right. But it's how we handle it. Very good. Very good. And we do see things differently after we come to the Lord. I know I do. I do. Praise God. I know. You know, I, uh, we're all learning. We're all learning. But I tell you what, I, I, there are folks that say, well, the Old Testament isn't important. <laughs> Man, I, I get all this out of the Old Testament. I get, I get all this by, by sitting in my office and studying and reading, studying and reading the scriptures over and over, and I asked the Lord to show me what you're trying to, trying to let me see in the scripture here. What is it that you want us to know? So, so this stuff here um, isn't out of a commentary in that aspect. This is maybe other people have different views on it, but I this is what I'm seeing. God showing us in the in the Word. Amen. It's very important that we we understand it, and. Uh, Praise God. Let's stand together tonight, okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty God, change us, O Lord. God, I thank you for the word of the Lord. I thank you, God, for your grace. I thank you for the opportunity to be teach these wonderful folks tonight the word of God. Lord, I just, the most important thing of all, Lord, to make sure that we know Christ, that we're saved, that we're born again. And I would pray that every person in this place would know the Lord. I would pray they would know Jesus, and if not, please come talk to me. But I know that's the will of God. But also, Lord, it's the will of God that for us that are saved, that's the will of God for us to be, Lord, sanctified, and as you're working in us and through us, to be more Christ-like in our life, and our conduct, and our actions, the way we treat other people, the way we treat our spouse, the way we treat our children, the way we treat one another. Let us remember that, Lord God, that what we say is important, but also how we say it is important also. So I pray in the name of the Lord that you would help us, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that, that we would put Jesus first in our lives. Lord, we don't have to live this way. We don't, but sometimes it's based on decisions that we make that are outside of the will of God. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord that you would speak to our hearts, that you would draw us closer to you, that you would open our hearts, that we would see the truth, understand the truth, understand what you're trying to tell us. Many times, God, we're resisting you or we're fighting against God. Maybe we're blaming somebody else. Maybe we're even blaming God when really we have ourselves to blame because of choices or decisions we've made. I pray, Lord, that we would take a serious look at our own lives, our own hearts, 
And I pray in the name of the Lord, Father, that we be truly honest with ourselves and honest with you. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, that you would please forgive us of our sins. We come to you, Lord, confessing that we're sinners. We come to you confessing that we need forgiveness. We come to you saying, God, that we've messed up. We're not perfect. We've come to you saying, God, we need your grace and your mercy in our lives. Please forgive me, God, for my mess-ups and my failures. Please wash my sins away. Lord, I pray, help me, God. Help me, God, to make choices based on the will of the Lord for my life. Help me, Jesus, in every way. Lord, I want to follow you. I want to follow the word of God. Give me a greater hunger for God, a greater love for the Lord. God, I'm asking you to put it in my heart, a desire to pray, a desire to worship, a desire to spend time with you, a desire to grow and to learn and develop as a child of God. Put that desire within me, Lord, to make you Lord and Savior of my heart and my life. That is, I know what you desire. So, God, I pray for this tonight. I ask your blessing on every person. Thank you for coming. Bless their home Keep them safe on the travels home. But God, do, right starting tonight, something wonderful inside of their heart. Do it tonight. Do it beginning right now. Something wonderful. Something of the spirit. Something of the supernatural. Something of God. Something of heaven. Do it now. Begin now, Father. I pray tonight for them. And I thank you, Father. Bring us back Sunday, I pray, morning. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. God bless all of you. Thank you for coming. I really enjoyed this study tonight. I really felt the Lord helping us. God is good. Check this out. Read the passages there in 2 Kings chapter 6 and also chapter 7. It goes into chapter 7. You can look at that as well, okay? All right, folks, God bless you. I love you. And I sure hope to see you Sunday and uh, Sunday school at 9.15 and morning worship at 10.30, evening worship at 6.30 on Sunday, okay? God bless you now.